Samsung has recently updated their One UI to version 2.0 and while it did come with some visual and usability tweaks, there weren't many new visual customizations for us to play around with. That is where GoodLock steps in. It's essentially a theming app that lets us change the entire look and feel of a Samsung smartphone. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and if you do end up finding this video informative, subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon and also share this video with your friends and family. Let's now get to good luck. With the new One UI 2.0, Good Lock has also been revamped. While Samsung have retained some of our old favorite features, quite a few new ones have also been added. And let's take a look at all of these today. So let's kick things off with Quickstar. This here lets us customize every aspect of the quick switch icons on the notification tray. There are loads of pre-made color options to choose from and you can even make, uh, make your own if that is what you want. Everything right from on and off color to the background and even the blur strength can be dialed in through this app. We can also modify what icons show up as persistent notifications. If you have a lot of social media apps like I do, the little bar on the top of the screen is almost always filled with notifications from different apps. So being able to hide some of the unnecessary notifications like say the alarm or the signal strength does help win back some premium real estate. By the way, Quickstar also lets us play around with the positioning of the clock on the notification bar or even hide it completely. Moving on, next we have Task Changer. This one is pretty much the same as with the last iteration of Good Lock. It lets us change the layout of the multitasking screen. Now, I personally don't really mind Android 10's default option, but there are a lot of choices here and I can see how some might prefer a condensed layout like the grid. It's kinda what we've seen with MIUI 11. This view also gives us a small icon on the bottom left to launch split view apps from the multitasking screen. Tapping and holding on an app icon launches the app in a floating window if the app supports it. Now what's weird here is that the animations are in the new One UI 2.0 animations for the old ones. I'm guessing this is something Samsung should address in a future update. The sooner they do, the better though. Third on the list, we have the clock face app. This lets us change the style of the watch face on the always on display as well as the lock screen. This is something we can do through the settings menu itself, but good lock provides us new options to choose from. And there's also a wider selection of choices and more can be downloaded from the Samsung theme store. Next up, there's multi-star and as the name implies, this one's all about multitasking. The first option is something I think a lot of users are gonna like. We can now reprogram long pressing of the multitasking key to open up pop-up screen instead of split view. Along with that, there is an option to force multi-window support onto every app. Now this can be a bit buggy at times, but that is to be expected given it's being forced on apps that don't support it natively. Then we have gestures for, for the pop-out mode. Swiping down diagonally from the top corners of the screen activates the pop-out mode and Multistar lets us customize how big or small the trigger area for these gestures should be. Then there are these features that help with the back end of multitasking. Like for example, this here ensures the pop-up app is not closed as a background process. Then this prevents the app from being minimized even when you switch over to the home screen. We also have a toggle that zooms in a little when apps are running in multi-screen, helps make the text more readable and finally, there's a color changer for the split screen. Cause hey, theming's always nice to have, right? The final one, it's Notistar and this is pretty simple. It keeps a backup of all the notifications that have arrived on the phone. By default, the limit is 30 days, but we can dial it down to seven or crank it all the way up to unlimited. It's a pretty nifty feature to have and it comes in handy at certain times. Now, if you thought we are done with all the good lock features, well, not really. Over to the next pane, we have a few more options. Theme Park is pretty self-explanatory. It allows us to design a theme for a phone right from scratch. So begin by choosing a picture, then we can choose a specific color that fits our theme. I like the amount of tinkering that we can actually do here. For example, we can check out how our theme looks if it's used uh, with the dark mode on. We can set the look and feel for the icons. There's a wide variety of customization options here. Next in line, Catch. It's kind of like Windows Event Viewer, but for Android. 
If you've ever been annoyed by your phone vibrating randomly, for example, and haven't been sure which app's been causing it, that is where nice catch comes in. This is just one of the many instances where it could come in handy. We can use it to figure out what apps triggered what action, the ringer, calls, toast notifications, screen wake up, and even settings changes. Now, the interesting option here is commercial detection. It claims to detect what app has last shown a commercial on the phone. I wonder how that would work out. And if there's some way we could get this onto a Redmi phone. After that, we have One Handed Plus. It basically lets us set a zone up on either edge of the device and we can use that gesture sensitive area to navigate through the user interface. Now the gesture navigation itself is pretty simple. Swiping straight simulates the back button. Diagonal up is recents. Diagonal down is home. All these gestures are customizable, as in we can choose what action to assign to each gesture. While it's a nice to have feature, personally, I don't see myself using it much. Edge lighting adds a few more cool effects to the default edge lighting options present. I really like the black hole effect. From here, we can also customize the color of the edge lighting as well as the duration. Following that, we have edge touch. If you grip your phone along the edges while watching a video, then especially on phones with curved displays, you could be prone uh, to accidental touches. Edge touch seeks to put an end to that. Uh, they, it sets up a zone around the edge of the phone that does not respond to touches. The setup is pretty easy and we can clearly see the usable and non-usable zones demarcated. Onto the last option on today's list, it's sound assistant. The sound settings option does come with the equalizer and so on, but sound assistant does make them all the more accessible through a one touch button. It can be activated via the volume keys and once the one touch button appears, clicking on it gives us the opportunity to control the sound on a per app level. Again, it's all about the granularity. That's the trend we've been seeing here. We also get quick access to the audio upscaler, sound effects, Dolby Atmos, and of course, the equalizer. There are two other cool features. We can let two apps of our choosing play sounds together. So for example, we can have a rain sound from YouTube and a podcast from SoundCloud. We can have them play at the same time. We can also allow audio from specific apps to be only available for playback through external sources like a Bluetooth speaker. Sweet, right? So I guess that's about it. A quick look at all the features that the new GoodLock 2.0 has to offer. I'm quite impressed here, not just because Samsung's offering these features, but because they are offering these features without making a huge deal about them. The fact that they aren't really marketing these features is probably why these features have ended up being aimed more at the user experience end of things. Uh, the thinking here has been about how to improve the experience, but not, I mean, and not about uh, how to make the phone or the software appear cooler. And that's probably the best thing about GoodLock 2.0. So what's your favorite feature? Leave a comment down below letting me know. And with that, it is now time I bid you adieu. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on what you felt about this video. Share it with friends and family if you can. Subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name is Ash. You've been watching C4E Tech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.